Do you like your town to have shops, hustle and bustle, a couple of coffee shops, and do not move to Dover, Massachusetts? I'm Jane, welcome to my channel, Living in the Boston Suburbs. I'm here to give you the real scoop on what it's like to live in the greater Boston area. In this video, we're gonna talk about Dover, an absolutely beautiful bucolic town that you will love. But maybe you don't wanna live there if you like a little action. Remember to subscribe. If you're relocating to the Boston area, I'm releasing a video each week featuring a different suburb. I promise to give you the real scoop based on my experience as a longtime resident. I raised three kids here, my husband and I both grew up here, and we love everything about Greater Boston, except maybe right now when it's freezing cold and dark and gray. The weather always gets better. That's the best thing about New England. I love to hear from my YouTube viewers, so feel free to reach out with any questions. Maybe you have a specific interest like rowing or dancing or fencing and you wanna get the scoop on what's happening in our area. Just send me a message and I promise to get back to you. Now, on to Dover. So Dover is just 20 miles from Boston and when I think of Dover, the first thing I think of is green space. Lots of you will be driving around and you'll see rolling hills and horses and pastures and barns. It is gorgeous and you can actually be in Boston in 30 minutes without traffic. Residents will tell you 25, I'm here to tell you it's 30. It has a great town center with some quaint buildings, typical New England. One of our favorite places to hang out in Dover is Elm Bank, which is the Mass Horticultural Society's headquarters. They have these beautiful grounds, buildings that are restored where you can host events. They have a children's garden and they have all these unique species of plants. It's really cool. And local towns also rent it out to play soccer there. So they have soccer fields in the middle, right in between Dover and its surrounding towns. Dover is surrounded by Wellesley, Needham, Medfield. Even though there's no hustle and bustle in Dover, even though there are no restaurants, it's easy to pop on over to Needham or Wellesley, which have many shops and restaurants and also good places to catch the train to hop into Boston. Dover is a small town. It's just 6,300 residents, so it's really closely knit community. And that is a plus. Another great thing about Dover is the excellent public school system. They always rank somewhere between number one and number 10 in the state. One elementary school, there's a middle school and high school that are shared with the community of Sherborne, which is right next door, another pastoral town. If you're relocating here and are interested in finding out about the housing stock, we have a pretty good variety in Dover. In 2021, the least expensive house was this very small fixer-upper for $440,000. And the most expensive house was 15 million. So for 15 million, if you're moving to Dover, you are expecting a grand estate, rolling pastoral fields of your own, and probably a barn and a paddock where you can keep your horses. Right now, there are a couple terrific townhomes available for sale in the mid one fives. They are 3,600 square feet. They're in really nice condition. One of them is over 55 community. If you are home shopping, feel free to reach out and request my buyer's guide. I will provide all the stats on the towns and it's easy to compare. Another great place in Dover is the Carroll Center. It has a really nice building right in the center of town, and it's a community center that has programs for people of all ages. There's a terrific Dover Mothers Association that meets there, and they have a great playgroup area. And when my twins were small, I used to meet a couple moms that I knew from Dover over there because I've raised my kids nearby Wellesley. One of the things to know about Dover housing is that it's all on septic instead of town sewer. So if you're not familiar with septic, basically it means that each house has a tank in the yard that collects waste. And instead of paying the sewer to the town or city to take your water and sewage away, it goes into a tank, which you need to have emptied every couple of years. They say once a year, but most people have it done. And when you need a new system, it can be quite expensive. So the good news is you only need to replace 
replace the system somewhere between 25, 40 years. We've seen some really old ones. It's regulated by the Board of Health in your town and the state of Massachusetts also has strict regulations on how septic systems are handled. You might notice on listings that it says Title V in hand or Title V not done. So typically it's the responsibility of the seller to make sure that the septic system has been inspected, cleaned, and approved. So the buyer should buy the house knowing how old the system is, parts that might need replacing should be replaced, and they at least have some idea of life expectancy. So you think of it not unlike a roof in that someday you're gonna need to replace the whole thing and that's gonna be a lot of money, but in the short term, it's not gonna cost you that much year over year. I'm happy to answer any specific questions on septic systems too, if you just wanna drop me a note in the comments. I live in the town of Wellesley, which is much more of an urban suburban vibe. And I like it because I can walk to Starbucks and hop on the train and there is shopping and restaurants in my town center. So to me, the fact that it's a sleepy little town is a negative. But maybe you want to drive and see horses on the side of the road and have a lot more green space and privacy. So that is an example of a con for me that may be a pro for you. There is only one stoplight in the whole town. A friend of mine did comment that after raising her kids, she felt like she spent a lot of time in the car. Since the school system is Dover and the town of Sherbourne combined, you might find that your child's best friend lives on the opposite side of town from you in the the next town. I remember thinking that when her kids were in high school that the kids are driving a lot as well on dark and windy roads. And it is a little bit of a longer commute to Boston than neighboring Needham, for example. There are also no sidewalks. Again, just depends on what kind of a community you're looking for. In general, if you are looking for green space and a little bit of privacy, then maybe Dover is the town for you. So remember to subscribe if you wanna get the updates on all the towns. I promise to always give you the real scoop on what it's like to live in greater Boston. Thank you.